I think I think tech companies deciding what should and shouldn't be on their platform uh, and what should and shouldn't be seen by by people to me is like you're you that that doesn't that doesn't show that you are for critical thought um, it it prevents critical thinking right like it prevents like oh if you're against someone like Steven Crowder why are you against him and you can and saying like well he's right wing well that's not reason enough like being right wing at this point is you know as as diverse and open as being left wing you know so it's like you have to be more specific about what that means what about your being the tech industry's moral obligation to censor Stephen Crowder what moral obligation? Like, why? Why is a bunch of rich people in Silicon Valley dictating what is and isn't moral obligation? I mean, <laughs> isn't that, if you, that's, that's part of the big question. If you watch or listen to the podcast that you know Rogan did with uh, Vijay and v- Vijay Gotti, yeah, um, Dorsey and Tim Pool, like it definitely comes off like they just really don't know. And Tim commented on that later. I like. I like watching Tim Pool's videos. I feel like yeah, he's Tim, doing Tim's, an okay job. Tim does good stuff. Um, I don't agree with him all the time, but he does good stuff. So I feel like they they feel like they're doing the right thing, you know, and they're citing their research that shows them that what they're doing is the right thing. So you know, it's like their moral obligation to make sure that Ben Shapiro doesn't talk trash on trans people. What about their moral obligation to do that? What about that? I mean, I feel like that's really what the argument here is about. Partly. That is part of their moral obligation. Yeah. I mean, if you provided a platform to people like you, Krish Mohan, you have Mohan book or whatever. Face Krish. Oh, man. <laughs> you have Face Krish. <laughs> and people are posting all this trash. Okay. I mean, and then what do you define as trash? I'm like trying to think of something. If it's if it's I'm direct, just, if I'm it's just direct... such a centrist. It's hard to think oh, of something. Um, it's raw. I think people can hear my eye roll. There's uh, easy answers, right? Well, when when I can't, I don't. Oh, I don't even want to say the easy answers because then the easy answers will screw up the video. I don't care. So what, what is it gonna? It's I'm. They're not showing my shit. I think I it was uh, another know. another commentator I've got into is, is Aiden Paladin, and I think she was was calling like okay, maybe the 1930s baddies had a point, right? Like I'm using my own censorship to try, kind of try and like okay. to make the point without making the point. Like, and you see that on your platform. Like, okay. Are you gonna want to like get rid of that? No, I don't. But it just, I might disagree with what they're saying, but I'm not. Okay, unless it's a direct call. But, but that's hard because it's got to be a direct call to violence, right? Failed threats are hard to decipher because then post you start. On, post on Chris book. Hitler had some good points. That's actually a joke, right? Like, Hitler had some good joke. points is a meme joke. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so that gets posted on which Chris, ones? On Chris <laughs> face. Does Chris face continue? <laughs> To host that that post. That's that's that would be that would be the investigation. That would be. But and then but, what if? But the way the, the investigation comments, is done is. But the way the investigation is done is somebody that sees that thing is like, oh, I am interpreting this as a call to violence. Uh, that this person is espousing something violently dangerous that is going to. Uh, put people, put a large group of people and a very specific group of people in harm's way. Dude, just like <clears throat> Betty's speech? Yeah. From Riverdale. <laughs> yeah. We're watching Riverdale. Yeah. But but that's the thing, right? Is is So then somebody flags the thing. At that point, it's why was this flagged? Uh, and, then, and then get in touch with the person that made the post to be like, tell us what, what this is all about. Are you espousing any of these things? Are you saying that we need to, we need to do what Hitler did in 1939 to 1942? It's just like a baddie to say that a baddie's not doing anything bad. Sure, but 
But that's part of the investigation, and that's also part of critical thinking, is that if that is on a platform, the, the other people that are going to use the platform, because there is a diversity of thought in humanity, uh, to say one diversity of thought, one thought is more acceptable than another one, again, it comes down to, like, are, is it a direct call to violence? Is it a direct call to attack a certain group of people? Right, and if and and look, if they're like, hey, people are going to interpret it the way they're, but that they're going to interpret it, that's a real tough call to make. And and with that sense is like, I look at the tech companies and I'm like, yeah, that's a real difficult call to make. Like, I wouldn't know what to really do in that sense, right? Like, because there is going to be a group of people that are going to, uh, that are going to, uh, that are going to like look at that and say. I want to go attack a bunch of Jewish people because, quote-unquote, Hitler had some good ideas. And that's not good. That's not okay. So if, if the veiled threat is eliciting responses of uh, other people acting violently towards a specific group of people, then, yeah, that post has got to go, and we might have to, we might have to block this user until they can figure out how to not do that, even if it is for meme purposes or, or trolley purposes. What? Um, so I, it's it's tough, and I understand. I understand. My the point is that it's difficult. It. It, I'm, I understand the difficulty behind it because of course I feel like the answer is like, of course I want to get rid of that. But then it's like once you are at the level that Facebook is at, which the argument is, okay, well maybe these are um, public goods, maybe these are public forums, and we need to have rules and laws around them like you would a public forum, this is the new public forum, that's one of the arguments that's being made, and that's why it's not like, oh my gosh, this Hitler thing needs to go, because what's my moral obligation on that, on Space Face, right? So what's their moral obligation? It's like, well, it's, it's, the moral obligation comes down to constitutional law at the point that it is accepted as a public forum, which in current iteration as of recording, it's not. Except yeah, because yeah. of Trump, which is kind of hilarious. Because everybody wants well, to say that he's evil for so many reasons and everything about him is wrong. But this is really pushing for like Twitter to be a public forum. Right, so that people can essentially strike him down. Uh, well, no, so that the American people aren't kept from seeing what he's saying, especially since he's, like, kind of using it to legislate, which I don't think you technically can. You, you, you can. You can. But... Can but or can't? You can't. You cannot. Yeah, I don't think you can. You like, cannot. You got, there's got to be, like, some paperwork, uh, some signatures. It has to go... It also has to, like, go through Congress in order to, like... Be I, mean, I think he puts ideas about what he wants to do That's, for legislation out he's there. He's riling but... up his base, and he wants his base to feel um, like he's on his side. And the best way to do that is to to go to that public space and make a bold, brash, you know, 256-character statement about an incredibly complex issue, rile up your base, rile up your opponents... Uh, and then make the whole story about Trump and not about the fucking issue at hand. That's a narcissistic move, though. But is it Twitter's responsibility um, to to censor that? That that's really what the question has always boiled down to. To me, it's I, I don't think so, man. Like, it's, if if you want to create a free and open platform, it sucks. But like. We're gonna have to do some critical thinking here, and I don't want anybody to be harmed. I don't want any sort of violence because of what somebody said on a certain social media platform. Um, but, but I think I think that people like people are smart enough to figure out like, oh, this is an unstable person, so on and so forth. And if there's a bunch of people that are like, yeah, we gotta do what this dude says. Uh, it's like, what the fuck is good? Like, that, that to me is a much larger question of, like, what is going on? Like, what is this larger public sentiment that we're seeing here? Um, 
but I don't think that you know that doesn't really answer the question of like why they 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 want to censor like certain people saying certain things but and kind of be like no we we are taking the moral high ground of censoring this person that said some negative things about a trans person which even though I disagree with what they say I think their right to say it is still there um you know it's up to it's up to us on on the other side to come up with valid reasons and say like here's why what you're saying about uh trans people or black people or whoever it is is wrong is incorrect it um, sounds a lot like the marketplace of ideas yeah kind of but it's also critical thinking it's also debating it's also discourse right what what i think this law is really kind of putting into effect um is when when like 800,000 Twitter profiles of independent, you know, journalist websites just disappear off of your platform, or when it becomes very evident that you have sold billions of people's data and private information to a company that is using that information to manipulate their votes and manipulate an election why are you not responsible for that why are you not taking accountability for that that's that's really the bigger question right because what like why like the cloud act was another thing that uh i i, I talked about the cloud act a bunch and i talked about all this cambridge analytica stuff a bunch last year there's a note on that uh yeah the, the cloud act was basically like uh cops Policing agencies globally can get in, get anybody's private information whenever they want it, uh, and you know, like the country, the country would basically oblige to any other international policing organization. Um, so it was like a big invasion of privacy kind of thing. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it landed. There was a lot of people. I think it passed, and then there was a lot of people that fought it, uh, like the Electronic Frontier Foundation fought it. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure where it landed, but that's a, that's a dangerous piece of, uh, technology. And, you know, if, if Facebook and Twitter are openly fine with censoring news organizations that say, uh, that criticize them for one, and also criticize, like, the American government or the UK government, or, you know, the Swedish government, or Iran, or Saudi Arabia, or whatever it is, uh, and, and the, you know, the companies over there, are like, we want to find out where this person lives, and, you know, uh, bring them into our version of justice, the Cloud Act can let, like, lets them do that, so that means Facebook can give people's information out, Twitter can give people's information out, you know, like, they all have those geotags attached to them, like they can figure out where you are and they're allowed to do that under the crowd and that's not again it's like where why do you have why do you do you guys decide that um that really kind of is what it boils down to i'm not saying it's not difficult to be one of these tech corporations but i think i think if you're gonna be a tech corporation like you need to have you need to have a little bit more of an ethical restriction on how you censor things on your platform. Um, and I, it's also like, you gotta give people the benefit of the doubt, right? Like, I, I always hate that argument of like, well, uh, I don't like it, so I never wanna see it again. It's like, how are you gonna learn how to fight something that you disagree with if you never, if you don't know what you're disagreeing with and why you're disagreeing with it? It's sort of like the basis of critical thinking kind of stuff. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections, where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in, in my life. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, 
Uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY, independent, socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.